All right, so let's take a look at this. So we had, this is our last setup we had. We had a, uh, this is setup I talked about before it happened, this um, failure trade. So these yellow trigger or entry bars will come up when there's possible three setups. There's a zone, uh, an outer edge zone. We had one at power hour yesterday. Where's it at? Right here. Or at 8.30 this morning for news. But this is just a shooting example. Obviously, you wouldn't trade this right at 8.30. But these are the three setups you have. You have the outer edge trade, which we had one yesterday right at the close of the market. Where's it at? Right here. I sent those out to you. This is where you get outside of the zone buy a candle close and you close back inside of the zone and that will form that yellow candle and an audible alert will go off on your speakers that's one of our setups in the room it's called a power uh, during the power hour in the morning session evening session i like to watch for those trades this is a 120 20 rinko so that's called an outer edge short this morning after news that's what happened this morning after news where's it at we got the new satin non fine payrolls. We got an outer edge trade, came down. The second setup we have in the room is called a zone breakout. A zone breakout is where you get a yellow trigger entry bar that breaks out of the zone break if the market's in a stronger position with this oscillator. If the oscillator is above 100 or below negative 100, and you get a breakout, you'll see this yellow bar that forms, and you get a nice continuation. That's called a zone breakout, right? Zone breakout. The third setup, and the last setup we have, is called, and I called this one uh, before it happened. I said we're going to look for a failure trade. If this oscillator gets below negative 100, gets back above and stays below 60 and crashes back below negative 100, this yellow bar will come up automatically. It did. This yellow ca candle came up, and we have a failure trade. So those are the three setups. You have an outer edge trade, a zone breakout, and a failure trade. Okay? The failure trade is the only counter trend trade that we have. Uh, this was a nice trade setup, 71 and a half potential, all the way down to 60, over 10 points. We would not give you guys a heads up in the room on the mic on this, looking for a possibly come up. And it's a nice trade. What happens if the market takes off? Like this on the S&P. What happens when the market is a blow-off rally? If a blow-off rally happens, this oscillator will tell us if we're in a stronger or weaker market. So once this oscillator, now our zones have been tested over the past 30 years. So we know these are the best zones, statistically speaking, on the S&P. We test it on the S&P for the last 30 years in these zones. So statistically speaking, these are the best zones. They have a trend filter built on them. If they are green, we're buying. If they're red, we're selling. The only exception would be the failure trade, would, would be opposite of these zones. So if these zones are green, and this oscillator is above 100, you'll see it come up, it'll give a little cup and handle, and it'll start flatlining right here. Once it starts flatlining, we're looking for a zone breakout here, guys, again, at 51.93. Once it starts flatlining, it breaks out. Look at the cup and handle come up. This cup and handle means that once we got into a stronger market, that 20 Rinko bar is dipping, intra bar is dipping, is dipping between there and there. It's still green, but it's retracing. This 20 Rinko is 20 ticks in between the high and low of the bar. That means there's a retracement of 20 ticks that's happening. That causes that little cup and handle feature to happen. Or if you're shorting, an inverse cup and handle. So you see it come up, gives a little cup and handle. Then it starts flatlining. And it flatlines all the way across an extreme level. And when, when you're at that extreme level, this market is hard trending. So we're in a hard trend market on this specific Rinko size from 941 all the way up to 1007, right? Until it starts going back below 100 again. So the question in the room was to, uh, to, well, with the traders is that this is a big move that we don't want to miss, right? So how can we fire in on these trades on if you get a continuation like this one fired perfect on this Rinko size 120 20 that's the breakout they got the first and second targets that's a breakout after news after 8 30 55 seconds or like here this big uh, not this one but the power hour close here big trade there yesterday 
on the power hour close. Big trade after lunch on the breakout on that double top breakout. Big trade on the power hour that I projected yesterday for you guys right here. I projected this in the room at 944, 949. There's your outer edge pop. So this Rinko size does give a lot of setups, so 120, 20. What if the market just takes off on you, though? What I've done in the past, I showed traders how to use a macro chart to micro chart, meaning use a large chart when it gets in a stronger position and then check down to a smaller Rinko size. So this is the S&P. It's one of my favorite markets to trade the system with, especially the outer edge trades. I love that setup. Let's go down to a real small Rinko size like a 7.7. 7. Now, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember when this market got into a stronger position. It got into a stronger position at 940, it broke out, but it never started flatlining until 941.47. So 941.47 all the way until it started breaking down at 1011. So 941.47. Let's go down to a smaller Rico size. Let's see what kind of zone breakouts we get. You can run with the strategy after you break out into a stronger, weaker market. Or you can run with the indicator by itself with your own ATM strat. If you go down to a smaller time frame then and we look at the breakout, we're going to get a lot of setups on the smaller Rinko sizes because they're small retracements and a big trend up. Remember, a 20 Rinko is going to have 20 ticks in between it. So it's going to have retracements in between that 20 ticks. So what that creates, it creates opportunity for us at 941.47. So we broke out into a stronger market at this level. So we broke out in a stronger market at 941.47 at this level after the failure trade said, hey, we're looking for a trend change on the smaller Rinko. We're looking to break out. This is exactly when it broke market profile into an imbalanced market. So now we had one, two, three breakouts on this Rinko size on the way up. So we never had any breakouts on the 12020 because it's a larger Rinko size. So what I'm 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 Educating traders is you can use a larger Rinko size to let the market get stronger and you can strategy in and once we get stronger in a larger Rinko size, you can toggle on your strategy for a smaller Rinko size to, to get you in on a strategy or indicator. So we can use a smaller Rinko size. Now you don't have to use a 177. You can, we used to use a 113.13 in the room. I'll even go up to 110.10 and 113. I'll still show you the breakouts. The larger Rinko size you use, the smaller retracements you're going to get on the 12020, the less retracements, which gives you less trades on the way up, but it does give you retracement. You can tell right there is going to be a zone breakout right here at 851.85.75 on this 10 Rinko size. This will be a buy breakout. It'll be coming up in a second. So right here we had a buy breakout at 945.36 on a 10 Rinko. Well, the 10 Rinko there's 10 ticks in between the low and the high. So your stops can be smaller because your stop has to be below at least the size of the Rinko bar. So it had one, two, three on the 11010. I can go to 11313. What I'm trying to show you is, is you can use smaller Rinko sizes, strategy or indicator with the large indicator push. If I'm pushing outside of an imbalanced market on a 12020, or if I'm pushing down below on a 12020, then you can use a 113, a 110, 177 on the S&P to fire you in on breakouts because this will fire on the 113, 13 that we had in the room forever. There's your breakout right there. There's your buy breakout at 85 and three quarters and got as high as 93 and a quarter. So you can use what's called macro to micro. You can use the larger Rinko size to fire in the smaller Rinko size also. So let's look at other markets. Let's go back to the 120, 20 to make sure you guys understand this. And let's look at maybe the Dow took off, right? Because David asked me, what's a good Rinko size on the Dow? Um, if you're using a larger Rinko size, it's 20 to 40 Rinko. And that's tip, the, your typical Rinko size is 20 to 40. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. I wouldn't go any larger than that um, as far as universal on all markets right across the board. But let's look at the let, let's look at this on the 12020. Let's put up the Dow real quick. Let's take a look at another market to give you the same type of setup. So if I look at this setup on the Dow, and I look, the larger Rinko size is doing well, right, David? So the larger Rinko size, David, has done well on the Dow this morning, correct? On the 12020. So right here, you were asking about the Dow earlier, David. Are you in the background, David? 
because uh, you asked specifically about the Dow. I want to show you I can use smaller Renko sizes on the Dow also. So let's say you pick 12020 as your as your specific Renko size that you want to use on the Dow. There's a failure trade on the Dow. There's a breakdown trade. There's a breakdown trade. But when really is the market really getting weaker, right, David? Because uh, you asked about the Dow Renko size. When is it really getting weaker? It's getting weaker right here. That's when the Dow is the weakest, right? The weakest stage. When you get a little, you get a little bit of a inverse head, uh, inverse cup and handle, and then you flatline. Inverse cup and handle, then you flatline. Inverse cup and handle, then you flatline. So you can use the larger Renko sizes if you want for your entry. Or what we can do is we can look at what? We can look when we start flatlining uh, after getting into a red or green trend, and then we can go check down to a smaller Renko size. So if I go down to a smaller Renko size, and I cut this in half, and let's say I cut this Renko size in half. If I cut the Renko size in half, am I going to have more setups? Yes. Now look at it, David. You see, you see my point on the Dow? Yes, about the Dow. You see my point? Now let's look at the let's look where I put the weaker the weaker market on the 12020. Right? This should resonate with you guys. Where's the weakest part of the 12020 start? The weakest part of the 12020 started right here. Or right there. That's where the weakest part. That's after the 120. The 12020 gave a sell right here, right? That's where the 12020 got in. But let's look. The 12020 did not have this sell or this sell or this cell, but you had three cells in between the 12020 trending. Then we got into a weaker market here on the 12020 again, we start flatlining. There's your flatline. Where's the next setup? Right here on the 177, or this is the 121010. Does that make sense, guys? Remember, does that make sense? So you can let the larger Rinko size start trending into a stronger, weaker market, but then you can let the smaller Rinko size pull you in. Does that make sense? Everybody on the same page? Hand me your wife, you on the same page. You guys understand? Dave, you understand on the Dow? You talked about the Dow. Brian, you good? Aaron, you good? But that's how you can check down to smaller Rinko sizes. Sal, you good? You can let it if you're breaking into a stronger, weaker market on other markets. Okay?